Have you ever seen those books that has like 40,000 chords to memorize or 40,000 scales? I mean, they're cool and they're comprehensive, right? But nobody can memorize that much. These enormous textbooks, they're great sources of information, but it's, I find it really a lot more useful if we focus more on formulas. So if you have a few shapes and a few formulas, a few ingredients, you can actually learn all of that stuff by using your own mind to sort of sort it out in your fingers from linking it to other bits of knowledge. So the first bits of knowledge that you wanna do for chords is learn your five cage shapes. Cage shapes, what are those? Well, they spell the word caged with C major, A major, G major, E major, and D major. You spell those letters, C, A, G, E, D, five shapes, caged. If you adjust those fingers on those chords, you can come up with every single chord on the planet, um, on the guitar. They can all come from that, that root shape or that foundation. That's your first formula to memorize. Learn those. Um, I'll give you a quick overview on those here. You could do a one finger C chord. So you hold this C note and you strum three strings. C chord, C chord, one finger C chord. We're gonna lift it up, place it back down. C chord. C chord. Now we can move into a two finger C chord. Finger one and finger two here. Two finger C chord. Two finger C chord. That has a C note and an E note. Strumming from the fourth string. What I like to do to practice doing these strings is I rest on the string before I strum. So I rest on the fourth string and drop. Rest on the fourth string, drop. Rest on the fourth string, drop. Two finger C chord. Now we can add in our third finger when you're ready. That is on the fifth string. One, two, three, four, five. On the third fret, fret one, fret two, fret three. So now we have all three fingers in. And remember, we're not pinching the thumb on the back. It's super relaxed and we're pulling the hand back gently. We plant our thumb on the fifth string here and we strum them all down and say, three finger C chord, plant, rest on that string, strum, three finger C chord, rest on the A string, three finger C chord, rest, three finger C chord, and for extra bonus points, take the hand off and replace it like five times. If it gets sore, you should shake it out. The main reason people get really sore is they hold it too long and or they're squeezing the thumb like mad. So let the thumb be relaxed, gentle arm pulling. And in between all your reps that you're doing here to learn these chords, shake it out and relax. That was the C chord. Let's move into the A chord. So the A chord, you could start practicing with one finger on the second fret, the middle string here, the bigger middle string fret two. So we're going to hold that and we're going to strum from the A string, which makes sense because it's an A chord. So hold the A string with your thumb and strum down. A chord, one finger A chord, one finger A chord. Remember the thumbs relaxed. One finger A chord, a one finger A chord. Then we could practice a two finger. So put two fingers on the middle. So the two big strings, two middle strings, two small strings. We'll put it right in the middle there. Two finger, A chord. It has a fancy name, but we're still just gonna call it two finger A chord. Let's practice building it up. Two finger A chord, rest on the A string, two finger. Now you should practice lifting it off, replacing it down. Lift it off, replace it down. Try to do five of those reps. Guitar training, <laughs> right? It's it's a lot of repetition. This is, this is what a practice can be like. Once you get to know these chords, these practice reps won't be necessary necessarily. You'll be able to have the muscle memory for it. But when you're building the muscle memory, this is the kind of stuff you got to do or you want to do. So then 
we can do three fingers. So finger one, finger two, and now we can add in finger three. So from the, the big middle string, the small middle string, and the second string, finger one, two, three, getting them right, as close to the metal as you can. So I like to tuck these ones back, straighten this one forward, and instead of having my elbow in, I often elbow out a bit to rotate the wrist so that these fingers come closer to the fret and not pulled far away. Because when they're far away from the metal, they won't make a very good sound. They'll buzz out. So trying to get them close to the fret as much as possible, not squeezing the thumb on the back, keeping it relaxed. Rest on the fifth string, A, strum down, three finger A chord, three finger A chord, three finger A chord, three finger A chord from the A string. So holding the string with this hand before you strum. You can lift off and replace. Doing five of those. I'm going too fast, slow the video down, take breaks. The speed of placing this just comes from doing a lot of slow reps at first, and then it becomes easy over time. But don't hurt yourself if your hand stops, take it hurts, take a break, shake it out. That was a one, two, three finger version of the A chord. Next we have C, A, G. Let's start with a one finger G chord. So hold the small, smallest string, G note, and you can strum. Why don't we start strumming just three strings from the string G. So plant your thumb, rest it on the third string G, and strum all the way down. Say one finger G chord, one finger G chord, one finger G chord. You could practice lifting it off and placing it back down. One finger G chord. One finger G chord. Okay. Next we can practice learning is a two finger G chord. So we hold that one and then we put the finger one all the way up here, the second biggest string, fret two. Smallest string, fret three. Second biggest string, fret two. Strum from the A string down, we have a two finger G chord. Rest on the A string. Two finger G chord, two finger G chord, two finger G chord, just those two fingers, two finger G chord, and practice taking them off and then putting them back down. Remember, we're trying to get curled on the tip, close to the metal, two finger G chord, five reps there. Practice isn't always fun. But it's efficient, right? If we can do some of those reps, let's shake it out. Two finger G chord. How about we do the three finger G chord? Finger one, sorry, finger three, finger one, and then finger two. So counting fingers one, two, three, four. Finger two goes to the big string. Notice how I have to keep it pretty straight to reach. Curl this one, curl that one. So you have to kind of adjust the fingers for them to fit. And we're trying to get close to the metal and you'll see my elbow will sometimes go out or in. In this case, I like to have my elbow up. Close to the frets, I like to have my thumb down a little bit here so that I can get open on those strings there and not tuck it back. So we got some open space for all these middle strings in here where this arch is curled and not leaning over on them. Again, thumb is relaxed. To, play, to press the string down, we pull the arm like this. Three finger G chord. Place them, three finger G chord, and you get to strum all the strings. So maybe plant on the big string, three finger G chord, lift it off, shake it out, three finger G chord, shake it out, three finger, don't squeeze the thumb, three finger G chord, just gently pull the arm, just enough. Three finger G chord, nice. So we've got C, A, G, we have from the cage shapes, one finger, two finger, three fingers of each chord. Now we're gonna go back to the E chord. So on an E chord, you can practice different finger versions of this. A one finger E chord starts on the third string. One, two, three, behind the first metal bar. That's this metal thing. We play on the other side, the left side of that. 
right behind that fret, curled up close to the metal. And we're gonna hold the third string here because we like to, to rest on the string before you strum. Land on the string here, third string, and strum. One finger E chord, one finger E chord. Plant, rest, one finger E chord. Remember the thumbs relaxed, lift and replace. One finger E chord, lift, replace. One finger E chord, lift, replace. One finger E chord, lift, replace. So five of those. Let's go for a two finger E chord. Try putting in the third finger or the second finger on the string above it. And then we'll strum from the fourth string. One, two, three, four. Strum finger one and finger two. Those are on the two middle strings of the guitar. Not the two small, the two middle, not the two big. So smallest middle string, finger one, bigger middle string, finger two. Strum from four strings. Four, four string or two finger E chord. Two finger E chord. Two finger E chord, two finger E chord, two finger E chord. And see how we're planting our thumb, resting on the string. There we go. Then we can practice lifting and replacing. Lifting and replacing. Very gently. Lifting and replacing. Shake it out in between. Two finger E chord, let's go for a three finger E chord. Finger one, finger three, and finger two. Three finger E chord, here we go. Three finger E chord, you can strum all the strings. Three finger E chord, three finger E chord, three finger E chord, three finger E chord, three finger E chord. So the fingers are curled close to the metal. One, three, and two. Thumbs relaxed on the back, not squeezing at all. Arm pulls back. Three finger E chord. The last chord is the D chord. So for this one, we could start with a one finger D chord. Hold the third string with finger one. And the thumb rests on the D string. That's one, two, three, four, the bigger middle string. Strum it down, sing one finger D chord. One finger D chord. Remember, thumbs relaxed, close to the metal. One finger D chord. One finger D chord. One finger D chord. Shake it out, replace. One finger D chord. Shake it out, replace. One finger D chord. Shake, replace. All right, let's do a two finger D chord. Finger one, and the string below it, we're going to use finger three. That's finger one, two, three, right here. Finger one and three and we're gonna strum from the D string. So rest your thumb on string D and strum down. Two finger D chord. Two finger D chord. Two finger D chord. Lift and replace. Two finger D chord. Lift, replace. Two finger D chord. Lift, replace. Two finger D chord. Always going for five reps. Last one, let's do the three finger D chord. Finger one, finger three, and the smallest string, we tuck in finger two. Sometimes you can replace it, place it different ways, like maybe start from the small string, finger two and finger one, or finger one and finger two. That's on the third string and the smallest string, right? And then you put in the third finger here, and you'll notice sometimes you gotta take the elbow out for some of these chords when you have the two fingers on the same fret. Otherwise, they're gonna be pulled far back. So sometimes you have to pivot the elbow out, like this one. So first two fingers, one, that's two. One, finger three. Place it in, close to the fret, thumbs relaxed on the back, arm pulls in gently, D chord. Shake it out, relax. Replace, D chord, shake it out, relax. D chord, shake it out, relax. D chord, shake it out, relax. I'm gonna try and plant rest on that D string. Rest on the D string before you strum. Then you get good target practice. Eventually you'll be able to find that D string instantly, like in a nanosecond. But at first we gotta go really slow, take a whole moment to say and rest, hold.
and then strum. Hold and strum. Hold and strum. You notice this kind of feels like a sports practice, right? It's just a lot of building muscle memory there. That was all the major shapes. C major, A major, G major, E major, and D major. That's the three finger version. How about a two finger version? Two finger C. I have to think about this. C, two finger A. Two finger G, two finger E, two finger D. Let's do one finger chords. One finger C, one finger A, one finger G. One C A G E, one finger E. So third string, fret one. Then we'll do one finger D. So that's the third string, second fret, strum from the D string, one finger D. All right. Let's talk about the letter formulas that combine all the stuff that make these chords. So first of all, we have the C chord. It is made up of three letters, C, E, and G. And we just loop them and double them in different places. Like we've got a C, an E, a G, a C, E, and then you can keep adding C, E, and Gs anywhere you want. But that chord happens to be that set of CEGs, three letters. Some people remember it as cowsy grass, or this whole saying of jibbity face, jibbity face. You say it twice, you can link together all the letters. It's basically just skipping every, every third letter in your alphabet, and then that's how we stack them. Thirds, three thirds, triads. C, E, G, cowsy grass. Then we have the A chord, spells the word ace, from jibbity face. Or if you counted A, B, C, D, E, be A, skip one to C, skip one to E. To be a major chord, it happens to be sharp. So we have this A with a C sharp note in it here. A, A, E, A, C sharp, E. So that's the A major. So after ace, we have the G chord. And that's like, if you know the saying, every good boy, all those little phrases for learning notes on the staff. Every good boy, so good boy does. GBD, jibbity, jibbity face. You have just different combinations of those three letters. G, B, and D. If you were to count, it'd be G, A, B, C, D. So G, skip one to B, skip one to D. GBD, GBD. So you have G, B, D, G, B. There's another G. So just combining GBDs, GBDs, it's a G chord, the major version. Then we have the E chord, and that's if you put GBD face, GBD face together, you have E, G, B. Or you could think of the saying, every good boy. Or you could count E, F, G, A, B. E, to the third letter is G, to the fifth letter is B, E, G, B. So this one happens to be sharp on the G because it's major. Because major sharp is up, major is more. So E, B, E, G sharp, B, E. That's our E major chord. Then we have the final chord, D. So if you count your letters, D, E, F, G, A, D to F to A. The F happens to be majored, so it's F sharp. So D, you've got an A note, you've got a D note, and an F sharp. It doesn't always have to be in perfect order when we're playing guitar chords, but it's just a combination of those three letters. 
D, F sharp, and A. That's the major. Now, we can minor these chords, which is kind of cool. All of them could be minored. Let's do the most common ones. The most common ones that are really comfortable to minor on the guitar are the A chord. So if you have your A major, you take the second string, which was C sharp, and you lower it one fret to a C. That's what we call minus or minor. So minus one fret is what minor means. It's that middle note, A, B, C, D, E. The C was sharp, so we minus it down from C sharp to C natural. So you have A, E, A, C sharp, and E. And we're gonna take this finger off to minus, and we're gonna put this one one fret lower to get A minor, A major, A minor. And then you wanna practice A major, A minor, A major, A minor, A major. So you can tell when I'm practicing, I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just trying to get experience which tends to improve and warming up. Expecting to be perfect right away is unrealistic and it blocks our progress. So do your best, take it slow and easy, and then put in the reps and eventually you'll, you'll get it all. So A major and A minor. So then you've also got C, A, G, E, D. The E chord works really well to go major to minor. So if you've got these three fingers in from your E major shape, to make it minor, we take this finger off. We have to minus that one, which makes sense. Like minor is minus one, minus one fret. In this case, we're minusing a finger too. So all the strings for E major with this G sharp note, you take it off. Now you have a G, which is minus from G sharp. That's E minor. E major, E minor, E major, E minor. So practice changing five reps. E major, E minor, E major, E minor. All right, the last one is a little bit of a finger switcheroo. So you have the D major, the F sharp, A and D in there. Those three letters makes that little triangle shape. To make it minor, what we have to do is take the F sharp that's the middle letter, D, E, F, G, A. F sharp, we're gonna minus that. So F sharp goes down to minor, minus one fret, we have an F. So a D minor would include the F, D, and A notes, which is D minor. And then to be major, this one has to come back up. We usually use this finger for that. D major. And then down a fret, we get D minor, then back up. Major, back down, D minor, D major, D minor. It's a bit of a switch of the fingers. So finger two, three, and one for D major. For minor, you can do finger one, three, and two. Or you may want to do finger one, four, and two. Whatever fingers work, as long as it kind of makes sense, and it's not hurting you, it's efficient. Um, Remember to keep that thumb on the back relaxed, and if you're in pain, take a break. But if you shake it out between each rep, keep looping things, um, eventually you can learn anything. So really keep a growth mindset. Like there's some, some, some not so helpful th things that you, I would recommend not doing. J don't just, you don't wanna think that you're just born being able to play guitar, because that didn't work for me, and I don't really know anyone that that worked for. Um, the more we play, the the better at some, anything with guitar, the better we get. So there's different different things we can do, and when we keep our reps going, we can get better at that. And there's even warm ups, right? Like you'll notice, I don't play perfectly all the time, hardly, <laughs> but I keep looping and keep practicing. And I know that at, there's there's times when I'm kind of at my best, at my peak and sometimes when I'm not, but I just keep the process going and there's there's a lot of skill growth within it. It's so much like sports, like soccer or football or you know, any 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 sport. You know, sometimes you're you're on your game, you're doing your best, and sometimes you're not. But there's strategies to like be ready, right? So some training, some repetition, um, practices.
performances, or like games. Um, and just knowing that, you know, perfection is not the goal, right? It's, it's just, um, hopefully we're enjoying the process and we have some really great moments. Um, that's what keeps me going anyways. I, 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 I really enjoy it. And, and, you know, sometimes there's, there's some hard work, but the challenges feel good, you know, like to do something difficult and figure out a way how to break it down and do it like an engineer would build some like super amazing big thing and then they just have to break it into small pieces and slowly build on all the little segments and then they put it all together and at the end you feel like wow that was a really cool big thing we we put together so growth mindset practice reps take it easy don't don't hurt yourself it's, it's a lot of great strategies and and little tweaks we can do to make practice fun, enjoyable, and and help you kind of reach your goals with where you want to go. And it doesn't have to hurt. It can be boring. It can be frustrating. But um, there's some pretty cool rewards if, if you like music, you know. Um, at least that's how it is for me. All right, guys. Have fun.